that's not something you would want. Yeah. I mean, you want to be a circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it takes it, because it's broken. Right. Okay. So how do we make a beautiful circle? Isn't it? Now, where is the circle? Is it in, in the place, in the space that we want the circle? Yes? Not so sure? No, no, yes. no, okay, no. okay, good, good. <laughs> we have our beautiful circle in the place that we want it. This is good. All right, now, I'd like to ask you each one, uh, two questions. One is, uh, what is your name? And you can answer right now. Go ahead and answer the video. What is your name? And Please just, I would like you to describe for me a, a moment that you experience in a, not necessarily in a theater, but watching a performance that made you um, either a discover why, discover that you wanted to be a, a performer or in the arts, or be de defined why it is you have chosen to be in the arts. Right? So a moment that was very powerful for you performance, a moment in a performance that was very powerful for you, um, and I'd like to, to quickly describe that to us, because we don't have a lot of time. Who wants to be? Hi, I'm Jimmy. Um, I saw a production of Proof when I was 16, um, and something just really went off in me during the scene where Robert is outside uh, with notebooks and a bridge of code, and he's like, he's getting better, he's getting better. He's having all these great revelations, and you see the like, sheer joy in Catherine's face that, oh, my father died, and then seeing how wrong she was during that crumble, and I guess in a kind of masochistic way, it was that, like that build up, that build up, and just pulling everything up underneath you, that is exciting me so much, and kind of for me up a lot, and kind of feeling such extreme joy, followed by such extreme pain, going to those levels so quickly is what I kind of love about this feeling. When, 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 did you, when did you realize that was happening? When, when, when was the crumble occurring? He starts listing off this equation that he's put together, um, and it just gets progressively more and more far fetched. And you see this smile falling down into this a lot of awful slump in Catherine. And it was, I guess that process, this motion for everything that felt like this. So it's this gesture. Yeah. I'm Esther. Hi, Esther. And, um, when I was in my early 20s, I believe it was Victoria Chaplin, who was about to be a town again, which is why I was just thinking of this, who did a show called The Circle of the Z, and she did a lot of circus stuff. And um, she had a routine where she was on, it was sort of trapeze, but it was like a big piece of fabric, <laughs> or rope, I guess it was a rope. And she was swinging out over the audience, and there was a lot of wonder happening in the theater. And we didn't see it, but she hooked her feet into it, and she just let go and flew straight into the audience. And it was the first time I'd ever heard an audience gasp, like you do when you're at the circus, don't you? Um, and it was, I mean, it was shocking. It was so exciting to be in a group of people that all went, <gasps> all at once. And it, I was already in the theater, but it really revitalized my love of it and give you a whole new reason to be doing that. She was all in white. She was wearing white. And uh, the sight was blue. And I'm sure she must have been spotted. There must have been a spot also, because she was pretty high up. Um, you couldn't see anything else except for her white. There was nothing else on stage. She was just up in the air. Yeah.
My name is Tanya. And when I was a senior in high school, in my English class, we went to see a production of Chartreuse. And, um, and I loved it. And what I loved about it was that it was very funny and somehow subversive and dangerous. And it was mostly the guy who was playing Chartreuse. And I remember a scene where he was groping the, the woman playing Elmir, and he did a sort of gesture where he all of a sudden looked like Christ on the cross, and the audience was laughing and laughing, and then they went, oh. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, he's so powerful. <laughs> and I wanted to do that. And then I realized that I was in big trouble. Was so. it a classical dress? Yes. Hi, my name is Adrian, and um, I guess the defining moment or performance for me was um, this past summer I saw Rainbow Golf, and um, it was just amazing. I think the strength of the actors was what made me just say, I mean, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I definitely believe in theater for a purpose, and not just show what we get on stage, oh, and an actor, look at me but really getting into the performance, being honest with yourself and honest to the audience. And I saw that there. What was, the, was there a particular moment in Radio Golf that you had that led you to that place that you thought, yes, that's, that's what I would do? Um, it was closer to the end of the play. Um, and the character Harmon was having a different argument with his wife. Uh, she was just frustrated she with what he was doing, she was tired of, you know, him, because um, he was running for office, and so she was kind of getting frustrated with that whole process and everything that he was doing. And it was uh, by being a star, she uh, was the actress, and she just looked at the audience and did her monologue, and it was so honest, and that right there just made me, you know. Was she isolated on stage? She was isolated, yeah. So you couldn't see anything else? Over you could see everything else, but she was like right at the edge of the stage, just looking into the audience's eyes. She was in the front. Yes. Yeah. And it was a very small theater, so very interesting. And what was she wearing? She was wearing, I believe, it was kind of an orange dress. Like a business suit. And when she was speaking, was she just trying a lot or was she? No, she was just sitting in a chair and just speaking to us. I'm Andrew. Um, and I saw a production of The Brothers Size um, about a year and a half ago. And um, the moment when Try a little tenderness. Um, the song starts playing, and uh, it it was a sort of small theater, uh, small dish. It, it was in the round. It was a little too warm. It, it was just everyone in the audience was so in. And as this song came on and just completely filled the space, um, after sort of a long stretch of the play where things aren't going so well, and, you know, it's, it's painful. Then after, th this song was just such, like, pure elation. And you'd be sort of, I guess, the opposite of, uh, of Jimmy's little memory. But you could feel, it felt like everyone was floating a couple feet above their chairs. Well, what was happening on stage? On stage, as the song was playing, um, the two brothers were sort of teasing one another and talking about, oh, I remember when, you know, when this song would play, you would do this. And they were just, you could see a little bit of sort of abandon come in for both of them, and they were just dancing and singing along and playing their air instruments. And, um, was there just, a particular moment during that song you thought, oh my god, that's the elation, that's the um, When the horns sort of swell in and um, yeah, you, what were they doing when the horns were swelling? They had stopped even pretending to play instruments and were just dancing. 
and were just, you know, it felt like, it looked like the music was coming out of them. Um, they were wearing, they're both wearing jeans and um, like just dark colored t shirts. My name's Carrie, and um, the moment that I'm thinking of was on, was in a film projection by Doug Aiken called Sleepwalkers that was projected onto the facade of the MoMA in New York. And um, when I went to see it, what was so neat about it was that I was both a citizen in New York and I was an audience member watching this projection. And it also felt like I was a performer because I had to interact with the people around me. And um, on the screen, I saw Donald Sutherland, who throughout the whole, the whole film had just been sort of sleepwalking through life. Um, and then in this really exhilarating moment, he, he almost looked like he was going to fall over. And then instead, he jumps onto the hood of a taxi cab and starts tap dancing. And it was, it was so beautiful to see and so exciting to see um, this out of the ordinary thing happening. And I guess it, it just made me feel like so many other people in life are just sleepwalking their way through it. So he was, he, he was on the street. He was on the street, crossing the street. Like he was in a film. So on the outside of the building yeah, right. was this projection. Right. And in the projection, right. Donald Sutherland was one of the actors. And so he's in New York, walking across the street, sleepwalking through life. And then all of a sudden, he just jumps onto the hood of the taxi cab. So was, he, was he standing in front of you, or was it just in the film? He was in the film. Yeah. So you were just watching the film. I was watching the film. He wasn't actually on the screen. No. It was in the film. It was in the film. He jumps on the thing, he starts dancing. Yeah. Right. What was he wearing? A suit. How was he lit? Was it daytime? Was it a night? It was night. It was dusk. Uh, Probably a hundred feet below. Mm -hmm. Just right across the street. Across the street. Yeah. And interacting with all the people walking down the street trying to avoid people. You were walking or they were walking? They were walking. They were walking. I was trying not to walk, but I was walking too. <laughs> Why were you walking? Why were you standing? Because it was there were a lot of there was lots of pedestrian traffic. Right. So everyone's moving and the Yeah. My name is Leanne. Um, my first memory of something when I knew I wanted to be an actor, um, I didn't actually watch, see a lot of theater until college, so the first thing that came to my mind was magic shows. Uh, we did a lot of magic shows. I'm from New Jersey, so we went to Atlantic City and Harris, and we see a lot of magic shows. Um, but if I can think of the most recent show that brings that idea. I mean, it was a moment in the magic show that yeah. okay, it's performance. Well, I, okay, well, then I can remember the magic shows. Magic shows, um, and I... One moment, whatever made you, like, I mean, I think the, the thing that pops the most, I can remember, is sitting in the theater, I mean, there were tables in the theater so you could sit and watch and eat at the same time, and I don't, I don't have a moment, I can just tell you what, I, I, the colors, I can tell you, like, the lighting, I can tell you, um, the, like the, the clapping and the, the noise and the fact of things disappearing and coming back into, into, into vision and this idea that magic was going on. And I was very little. <laughs> My favorite trick? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. My favorite trick is um, when they take the, uh, the knives, okay, the, 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 the black box, it's down, it's kind of like a casket, and the ladies in there, and they put um, the knives in all the way through, and I'm not a violent person, <laughs> uh, they put the knives through, and then she's 
but then they open it up and she's not even in there. You know what I'm talking about? When they put the knives to the cast in. She's, not, she's, not, she's in there. She steps in there. She steps in there. She's not in there or she's not stabbed? Are you saying she disappears? No, I'm talking she disappears after, after she's stabbed. That's like two tricks in one. That's like crazy. <laughs> <eight. laughs> I know. So she goes in the box, they put the knives in, and then she disappears. And then he opens up the box, and there's knives in there, and they're going through the box, but there's nobody there. That's what crazy. was she wearing? She, oh, um, first put the paint on Skimpy, but, uh, <laughs> so, um, but short, like, a uh, very fitted, short, um, like, uh, fringy at the bottom, red, um, sparkly, and it's tight up here. Oh, bodysuit, yes. Very bodysuit, as her hair was up, um, and she has pumps on and uh, tights. And then you said colors. What kind of colors? Of the, of the clothes? And then you said that you could see colors. I could see colors. The, the, I guess it would be a sky, I didn't know what a sky was then, but it, 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 um, it would be a uh, sight. I said sky. It was sight. Sight. It would, um, there's a lot of purples and reds and really gaudy, sparkling, Things coming down. Um, looks, like, looks like fringe. Looks like what's on her clothes. Yeah. And music. A lot of music. What was playing when she disappeared? Uh, I don't know. Was there a noise? Yeah, I can. I can. Um, like, I want to do it, but I don't know how to do it. Right. I don't know. Do uh, it. <laughs> okay, good. So, uh, so really fast. Okay, uh, because <laughs> that's a lot of time. But um, thank you for all those experiences. Now, one of the things that often happens, which happened here, and ninety-nine percent of the time happens, is that when people describe these, I hear no words. There are no. There's no. Te people don't remember what people said. They're like, oh yeah, they were like blah blah blah. But they don't actually remember the words. They remember what they were wearing, they remember the cut, they remember all of these other things that created this moment for us to go, oh, oh my god, that's the best moment ever. Right? So what so quickly those those things throw them out. I, I was gonna write them up, but we don't have time. So uh, quickly, what the what are the things practically in the theater that we use besides text to create these moments? Music. Movement. Lights. Sound. Just. Darren. Good. What else? No, no, no. Be in order. <laughs> this is the anarchic part. <laughs> it's an word. Except words. Well, I mean, we can use. We can say words. Okay, people. Surprise. Surprise. What do you mean by that? Um, <laughs> well, I'm seeing one. How do you use extreme opposition? Yeah, go. Okay, let's sort of like dynamic. Yeah, sort of. Uh, but in like a uh, more, more intense way with text as well, and sending and writing. Okay, one thing at a time. One, we got, <laughs> if we try to do too many things at once, it's going to be a little mud. So one, one, like. What do you mean by it? Extreme opposition in text, in some physicality in text. Okay. So, here, and then going to here. Okay. Good. Antithesis. Yes. Great. Good. What else? Faces? Expressions. Expressions. Okay, good. Connections. How do you mean? Um. Okay, good. Yeah, just this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so you get the idea. So these are like specific things that we can say, okay, you try this, you know, over from over there and over there, and now let's change the distance and it becomes something else. All right, that's what we're talking about. Okay, so let's all go take your seats. Because I only have, do I have any time at all? I'm not, I'm, 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 I
I'm just gonna do some of this really quickly and then I, I did that all day. I have no more timing for me. Awesome. Okay.